I had a friend, in fact, a classmate at uh, Texas, and uh, he held a job of engineering editor with World Oil Magazine. And at that point, uh, my last station for Gulf was in Lafayette. Uh, and uh, he called on me one day in Lafayette, and, and he said, I'm going to leave the company for a, uh, to go in business for myself. I said, what? He said, why don't you come and take my place? And I thought, well, that, I think that's the most ridiculous suggestion I'd ever heard of. I had never written anything for, for publication or anything else except company AFEs or, or things like that. And, uh, <clears throat> but I needed to get back to Texas. My folks were not in good health over here, so I, uh, I saw this as an opportunity to get back to Texas. In those days, you could not transfer from Gulf Oil in Louisiana to Gulf Oil in Texas. You had to quit one company and go to work for the other one. And uh, so I, I decided, what the heck? Uh, I came over and interviewed. Uh, the company was, uh, uh, at that time, doing very well. Uh, we had a, a pretty sizable staff. And, <coughs> excuse me, uh, I, I, I joined up. And uh, they put me to work. And they said, look, we're going to tell you something. If, if, if this is not for you, and we find that out after you're here six months, and you find it out. Uh, just go look for a job. You can stay on the payroll, but we'll keep you on the payroll till you get another job. And uh, well, obviously, I didn't. I stayed there 40 years, and uh, it was a great company to work for, Gulf Publishing Company, which published World Oil, of course. I was hired as an engineering editor. Gulf's, uh, Gulf's. Uh, Mr. Dudley's uh, thoughts, he was a journalist, uh, uh, per se. Uh, but if he was going to publish a technical magazine, which uh, World Oil was uh, going to be, <coughs> he hired people from the oil industry to work on those magazines instead of journalists. And uh, of course, they always had to have a journalist or two to teach the engineers what to do. <laughs> we, we couldn't do without those guys because we learned from them how to essentially do their jobs, uh, as well as uh, being knowledgeable in the field that uh, you were responsible for covering. I guess the first major uh, articles that I ever came up with was uh, my tour of the oil fields of Saudi Arabia. And, uh, and also I had the opportunity to tour the Iranian oil fields and, and a, a number of places in Europe, uh, of course, which were pretty minor uh, operations at that time. The North Sea had just started uh, when we first, when I first went over there. Uh, first started as a, as a place of interest for, uh, for the uh, major oil companies. And, uh, but my, uh, the Middle East, uh, I have uh, also been to Abu Dhabi and Egypt uh, uh, and toured their, their facilities offshore in the Gulf of Suez, where you could look across and see Sinai, which at that time was Israeli held, and, and uh, the Israelis and the Egyptians were at a rather testy peace. And uh, there was a little story involved in that, that I, uh, uh, when I got there, the, 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 my host said, now, in the morning, we got a helicopter leaving at, at, at uh, 7.30, and you be there ahead of time, so we got to take off exactly at 7.30. And, uh, uh, and so, well, fine. And uh, I, I said, as I'm, uh, I'm, I'm a bit curious, why, why exactly at 7.30? He said, we have a uh, underhanded agreement with the Israelis that, uh, that uh, we, won't, uh, we won't interfere with one another. And if we don't take off at 7.30, they can shoot us down. So I, I told him I would be there at 7.30. And I was, and we had a great, great tour of the field out in the, out in the Gulf, uh, Gulf of Suez, and, uh, and came back, and the Egyptian, uh, 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 EGPC, uh, the Egyptian uh, oil uh, National Oil Company, found out I was there. I was, a, ho I was hosted by Amoco uh, for the, uh, for the uh, offshore stuff. And, but, the, but the onshore guys from EGPC found out I was there and nothing would do, but I had to go see their stuff too. So I had spent a couple of days with them uh, in another area uh, north of uh, 
north of the uh, uh, Rosh Shakur was Amoco's base, and theirs were up the coast of the way. But uh, the, uh, it, it was really great. I, I love going through the Middle East. I was fortunate enough to be able to see things and do things. I, I, I had toured the Kuwaiti oil fields before, well before the uh, big uh, Isra uh, 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 Iraqi invasion and so forth. So I had a, I had a very good grasp of, of the geography of the place and the, uh, who was who and, who and where the fields were, where the highways were, and et cetera. And I happened to write a column, uh, a fictional column, when when things were starting to boil over there and the Iraqis and the, and the Iranians were fighting. Uh, I wrote a, a fictitious piece about uh, how the uh, Iranians uh, overcame the Iraqis and came around and invaded Kuwait and finally Saudi Arabia. And uh, it was all tongue-in-cheek. When I went to Saudi Arabia, some of those guys said, you scared us to death with that. <laughs> <laughs> was on, a, on a second trip to Saudi. A bit fortuitous, huh? Yeah. yeah. My, my other major over, overseas area that I visited more than any other was China. Yeah. And I, I visited China about 10 times, I guess. And uh, I've been to all of the major oil fields except the ones in the far west. And I made a lot of good friends. And uh, uh, it was a, uh, th that was really a fascinating, uh, fascinating experience to be able to do that. Uh, I spent uh, usually almost three weeks over there on a number of trips individually. In other words, one trip, three weeks. Because it took time to, to travel and to go to the various places where we were we had to go. And uh, were you there when, when China was kind of going through their major social transition? Oh yeah. And oh yeah. Well, Mao Mao Zedong had been dead a year when I first went, and uh, they built this big mausoleum for him right in Tiananmen Square, and we and that was a, a must place for foreign visitors to go. So. We, we had to go see Mao, <laughs> and we did. Uh, I was in a group. Uh, the first three trips I took were under the auspices of the National Council for U.S.-China Trade. And uh, <clears throat> so we had uh, uh, people from various American companies went on those things. I think there were about seven or eight companies on the first trip. And it grew later. Sometimes we had 20 guys or more. and. Uh, uh, on, the, on the first three trip, and then subsequently I made trips on my own over there, and uh, uh, the rest of the time I visited. But the initial trips were, uh, the first one was in 1977, okay. and uh, we were the first, that was the first trip by uh, uh, an organized group of uh, oil people to go to China. Uh, I got a bamboozled into be, being uh, the head of the Petroleum Production Division of the National Council of U.S.-China Trade. And uh, so I was the leader of the group. And uh, uh, it, was a, it was a fascinating experience. I, I eventually became editor of World Oil uh, uh, about five or six, seven years after I was there. And I... <coughs> I stayed editor for a while, and then editorial director, and then I got promoted to vice president and so forth. I kept outliving everybody. <laughs> <laughs> Finally, I ended up as the chairman, president, and CEO. Wow.